What's going on guys? It's No No just checking in and today I want to make a video acknowledging the fact that I do have a hundred days sober. I want to be really, really upfront and say that I'm not here to convince you of anything. This video has no intention other than to be honest and share my experience. I don't care if you're a drinker, I don't care if you're not a drinker. You're safe here either way and I'm glad you're here. But just know that I have no agenda other than to be honest about this experience in case it might benefit you. It certainly benefits me to continue to be honest with you guys about what's really happening in my life. When I was 13 years old, I first had alcohol, and it was the greatest experience of my entire life. And I'm not exaggerating. I sincerely believe that that was the best moment of my entire life up until that point, from what I knew and the perspective I had at that time. I went to a, a friend's house, his older brother was having a party, the older brother put three beers in a big gulp cup, and he drank them really, really fast. He chugged it, and then he put it in my hand, he said, this is how you drink. And so I chugged three beers down the very first time I ever drank as fast as I could. I wanted to impress them. I wanted to be cool. I wanted to fit in. And, uh, and instantly it hit me. That euphoria, that carefree, that, that weight off my shoulders. At 13, I had found nirvana. I had found the greatest moment of my entire life. And I would continue to pursue and chase that moment to the bitter ends. Um, I wish I could say that I learned faster, quicker. I was more in tune with, with the effects that alcohol was having and has always had on my life, which is negative. It takes over my whole being, it takes over my whole train of thought. Uh, throughout the day I obsess. All I ever did was think about drinking after that point. I had no idea that I'd flipped a switch so massive at 13 years old, but I did. And I chased that buzz and that relief and that high for the rest of my life up until this point. I currently have 100 days sober and it's not the first time. I have in the past attained over a year, I've gotten nine months, I've had six months, I've had a ton of three or four month stretches and then a handful of 30 day stretches. I've also had a zillion days in between where I couldn't go more than one day without having a drink. The reason it's so important to me to continue to reflect on this and talk with you guys about this, aside from perhaps connecting with some of you, um, you know, about this issue if we, if we maybe have this in common. but. It's to remind me why I do what I do, why I'm doing this, what it all means to me, and, and how to keep it at the forefront of my mind. If I don't talk about it, I feel like it sort of just puts it off as if it isn't so, so incredibly important. You know, a lot of people might not realize this, but the alcoholism, it precipitated this whole event in my life that led to this channel. Um, alcoholism has taken me to very dark places, and I've done some really bad things. And uh, when I think the time is right, and if the demand for it, not to sound pompous, but if there's a demand to hear my story, my whole story, I will share it with you guys, and I won't hold back. But I have 100 days sober, and, um, and I'm really glad, I'm really grateful. I, I'm not here to tell you that it has been extremely easy, but I've been doing it differently than I've ever done it in the past. My desperation to figure this out has never been greater. Um, uh, the whole reason I ever had my huge mental breakdown was because I couldn't stay sober. And I went to rehab on my own volition. And when I got out, I relapsed. And when I relapsed, uh, I was so desperate that I tried an injection, a shot, a medication that would help with my cravings called Vivitrol. Some of you have heard me say this a number of times. I had a rare reaction to that shot. Um, people that are heroin addicts or opiate addicts, they use it to block the effect of opiates, but it also has the same effect for alcohol use. It, it just creates a ceiling. And I had a rare reaction and I had a full-blown mental nervous breakdown, um, and it led to this channel. And I was so sick for so long that I forgot all about my alcoholism. I was just suicidally depressed, depersonalized, and anxious. But as soon as I felt just well enough to maybe have a chance of being alive, my alcoholism crept right back into my life and I started drinking again. And you guys have watched me battle this on this channel a number of times. I've had 90 days sober a couple times on this channel, 100 days sober, and it's been really hard to admit to you guys that uh, I was failing. You know, I didn't want you to see me like that. And you guys have seen me through a lot. But I kept failing and so this time around I decided I was going to do something different. Um, I sincerely believe, not believed, but currently believe that if I can't stay sober I am going to die. Me, myself. I don't think I can handle uh, pouring a depressant into my body anymore to cope with life. It's a really, really dark, scary place to be. And the reality of being sober is a pretty scary place as well. Um, there are issues and feelings that I've never dealt with since I was a little kid. 
some people say that when you stop drinking or you start drinking and you drink heavily like I drank, um, a part of your development emotionally and, and into it, into it mentally, it, it stunts, it stops. And so wherever you stop drinking, that's where you pick up your ability to start growing as a person. So in a lot of ways, I'm just a kid. I'm just a kid. And I'm learning how to live life on life's terms. I'm also learning how to live life while dealing with depression and anxiety, like a lot of us face. A lot of people that have addiction and, and alcohol issues, they deal with mood disorders. And I think that's always scared me about getting sober is because how was I going to do any of this if I couldn't end up having that escape? I could do okay for a while. I could not drink for a while. But eventually, this all becomes too much. Eventually, I need, a, I need a breather, I need a release, or I can't handle it. I just can't handle it. And I got to a point here where I could not imagine my life drinking one single time more, but I could not imagine not drinking ever again. I couldn't imagine living anymore, but I couldn't imagine dying. I was just in that really scary no man's land. And it, it's what pushed me uh, to take this as serious as it deserves to be taken. It's the number one priority. I lose everything without it. And as it stands, a lot of you know, many of us are fighting every day just for our own sanity. We're fighting every single day to figure out life and how to live it and how to overcome the obstacles that face us. So in this round of sobriety, building up to these 100 days, um, what I've done differently than I did in the past was I is that I, I got a sponsor in my 12-step program. I'm completely turning it over to people that have done it before me. I'm making it my number one. I was told and I firmly believe now anything else that I place at number one, it'll be the first thing I lose. My relationship with Jesse, you guys, my job, my sanity. And I'm going to a lot of these 12 step meetings and I'm really treating this whole thing like an infant. Like I don't know anything, I just need to be taught. And it hasn't been completely easy. Um, my brain, I'm very sensitive and and while I am unbelievably grateful that I am sober right now, and I really can't stress that enough, it's a lot of hard work. It's not butterflies and rainbows, um, but there's hope. And I see people that have been to dark places like I've been, many of you have been too, and, uh, and they have something that I want. They have figured out a way to live life without eventually turning to alcohol. And that's been my pattern since I was 13. Things could be going well, things could be going horribly, Alcohol was always my solution for everything. And uh, it can't be anymore or I'm going to die. So I have a service position. I set up a meeting and make coffee once a week. I'm meeting with my new sponsor once a week. He's taking me through the steps of this 12-step program. Um, I'm not saying that's the only way to get sober, but I have never been able to get sober and stay sober and actually learn how to live life on life's terms on my own, uh, by my own will. I always end up running back to what I know and what I know is very destructive. The first month, I kind of had a honeymoon honeymoon phase, um, but since then, my mental health has been all over the place, all over the place. And what it has, though, done for me is afforded me the opportunity to actually look at my life for what it really is, um, and take or or take counsel and seek counsel from people that can objectively help me understand myself. And that's a great opportunity. It's also allowed me to be a lot more emotionally available to the people in my life directly. My fiance, Jesse, my friends, my family. I really, um, by nature, I'm a very selfish person and it's something I have to work on. But left to my own devices, I, I just get so self-involved and self-absorbed. And if I'm drinking, it's, my life is me and my booze. That's it. So this has allowed me the opportunity to see what other people need better. I've always been compassionate and cared, but I'm an addict, I'm an alcoholic. I, I just get absolutely lost in that when I'm in it and it takes being removed from it and then constantly be putting effort towards it to see it for what it was. Pure chaos. It's like I, I don't know how to be peaceful and I'm still looking for serenity. And like I said, it hasn't been perfect. But what I'm doing right now actually gives me a little bit of hope because it, it lets me know there could be. I'm doing this on faith base and I'm not trying to get all religious on you. I'm not going to push it on you. I'm just having faith that if other people like me messed up people like me can figure out a way to live life and not turn to alcohol and not just fall to pieces. I just want to have what they have. I want to keep it simple and I want to have what they have. So that's where I'm at. So I'm taking action every day. I'm learning this thing every day slowly. Um, and it's, I'm better off for it. Still battling depression, still battling anxiety, still battling rumination and, and crazy thoughts. But, um, but I'm being provided the opportunity 
to take a step in the right direction every day. And the defeat I used to feel when I would wake up after knocking out 18 beers or something like that, that, that incomprehensible demoralization that I would feel, I'd do anything to not have to feel that again. Life's hard enough as it is, um, and I would do absolutely anything to not have to feel that again. So I'm trying and I'm fighting and I'm praying that I can stay here and just trust and have faith that everything's going to be okay. If you happen uh, to be fighting this sort of thing, just know that I'm here for you and I understand. And it's not easy. It's really, really hard. I feel like I was built to have alcohol in my system. And uh, I don't really know how to live life without it. But I'm learning. You know, I'm really, I'm learning. And we'll see what happens. God willing. For whatever God you may or may not believe in. God willing. I can uh, hang around long enough to get the promises. It's going to be a long, hard journey for me. And it has been for a lot of people. Some people get into sobriety and they seem to be doing so well so fast. Um, I've already seen a little bit of the gifts, but mostly I realize that there's hard work and all the stuff that I stuffed inside of myself for years and years and years and years, it, it was waiting for me to deal with and I'm trying. And I'm going to open up to you guys about it as much as you want me to, periodically, no matter what. And I appreciate you and that's just where I'm at. 100 days. We'll check back in a month or two, something like that, and see how I'm doing. Um, see if anything's changed. But right now, damn it, I just kind of stay the course. Ride the waves, the ebbs and flows, and then continue to control the other things in my life I, I can. Um, yeah. That's just where I'm at, guys. So thank you for your support. Hang in there if you're struggling with this sort of thing like I've been. Um, and uh, that's all I got. Thank you for letting me share. Thank you for letting me be open about my experience. I care about you. One day, one hour, one minute at a time. Uh, we'll do another video soon, guys. And if you want to hear my entire complete story with alcohol, the whole thing, let me know in the comments below, and, and I might set that up. All right, thanks, guys. Oh, and of course, please, sorry, share your experience. Um, how has this stuff affected you? What if, what's worked for you? What hasn't? You know, what are your biggest struggles if you happen to be struggling with this? How have you dealt with them? What's sobriety been like for you if you're sober or what's keeping you from trying if you feel like you want to be? Whatever you want to share, I love learning from you guys. I love reading your comments. Take care, guys.